Hey everyone, how you doing today? I have a very special guest with me today. I have someone that is new to the channel, but has been a part of the One Rental at a Time family for quite a while. It is Jen Pritchard. How you doing, Jen? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Thank you for doing this this evening. I understand you're a little bit nervous, but I promise it'll be easy and we'll just have a casual conversation. Yeah, uh, like I said, Jason will see this wherever it goes. He doesn't even know I'm doing it. Nice. I love that. You, you and Jason are, are one of a kind, great couple somebody to be admired. And, and really where this conversation came from is you two were the first couple that I interviewed to talk about money, budgeting, the challenges of getting together, merging money, you know, really becoming, you know, entrepreneurs together. That's sometimes hard. Uh, I reached out to both of you. Jason was nice enough to get you on that first interview. And you guys are the bonus interview in my $99 course. Um, yeah financial freedom starts here. So you guys are the, it's like 45 minutes long and it, it was really? just a blast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But what I took from that and why I wanted to talk to you now, this will go on YouTube and this will absolutely be a part of the free course for years to come. Again, the free course is you told me about ex an experience with your father, your dad, you were under 13. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. And you were, you were paying bills or watching him pay the bills with the checkbook. And <laughs> That's not a normal behavior for an 11, 12, 13 year old boy or girl. It's, 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 it hit me. I was like, we, we've got to talk about that. So tell us about that again. Yeah. So, um, I have, been, I've always had a really, really close relationship with my dad and went everywhere with him. Um, you can ask my brother, my sister, they know I'm, I'm dad's girl. Um, so, you know, he would get paid every, every two weeks. And then when his check came in, we would sit down together we would write down all the bills. I would, we would subtract, you know, right there in the ledger on the checkbook. Um, and then at the end of, end of it, I saw how much money was left. And so I think for that reason, you know, I, I don't remember asking my parents for too much. Um, they may feel a little differently, but <laughs> I feel like that was, that's what made me different um, compared to my brother and sister, because I had a really solid understanding of like what was left at the end of the month. And then, you know, we still need groceries and, yeah. you know, all that other stuff. Well, that's, that's amazing. And, and again, that is rare. So shout out dad, right? D dad's girl, as they say today. Um, that's, that's the big part. I'm, I'm hoping more parents do that with all their kids. I will say, I wish we would have done it with our kids. We did not. <laughs> <laughs> Lessons learned, but let's help other parents do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I do think they've got to be like North of 10, right. They've got to understand addition and yeah. subtraction. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's important because again, when you saw that, right. And that's the, that's, that's step one in my course. Okay. What's the income? What's your net? What are the bills, rent or mortgage, car payment, you know, food, entertainment, and then what's left yeah. because that's the opportunity cost. And you saw it, right? Hey, mom and dad had $330 left over. Not mm. a lot of choices to be had where your brother and sister are like, mom and dad are flush. They just got paid. Yeah, because they would always give to them because they didn't want them ever to do without. So even if they didn't have it, they would find it somewhere. Wow. So uh, so now, you know, when did you get your first job? Not like working for mom and dad job, but like. Uh, I was probably 15. Okay. Um, <laughs> the first place that I worked was with my, I did work with my aunt and uncle. They had a barbecue stand. Okay. And so I'm barbecue chicken sandwiches. But I would say my first job where I was actually on payroll yeah. was at the uh, craft store. My mom, my mom, um, knowing they didn't have a lot of money at the end of end of the month, right? Yeah. My mom, um, she stayed at home, and but she always contributed to the household. Um, so she used to make crafts. Nice. I mean everything. My mom is an incredible artist, painter. I mean anything that you need, my mom can pretty much make. Wow. So there was a store here in Fresno where there were all these different booths. There must have been like four hundred booths or so. And then different people, you would pay your monthly rent. It would cost maybe, I don't know, 60 bucks or so. I don't remember what it was. She would sell her crafts from there. Nice. I would always go in there, help her stock the booth. And then eventually when I was able to work, um, that's where I worked for a couple of years. Very, very cool. So I'm wondering how that experience from 10, 11, 12, watching dad pay the bills. Now you're getting your own check, right? You're seeing FICA, right? The employment tax taken out. You're like, oh my God, I got to pay taxes. What is this about? How did you treat money when you got your first paycheck? Was it, hey, mom and dad, here's some more money for the family? Was it, hey, here's half for you, half for me? I mean, what, what kind of happened? 
It was definitely a lot here, mom and dad. Here's money for the family. <laughs> Fair enough. That's not worth it. Um, I would say it just went to things that I wanted to buy for myself. I never wanted, wanted this is probably where I get it from, actually. It's more like a therapy session, Boober. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I'm, Jason will tell you, I'm very, very stubborn. And I never want wanted anybody to, you know, I didn't want to be a burden on anybody. I didn't want anybody to have to provide for me. Mm-hmm. So having a job really young yeah. probably helped me be able to buy things on my own. Um, when it came time for college applications, um, you know, anything that I needed from school, I went on a really sweet trip with my high school counselor when I was a sophomore and she took me back East to look at all these colleges and, you know, I got to contribute to that. Um, yeah. Things that I needed. Okay. So was saving a big deal or was it, Hey, I'm going to go buy this. I'm just making stuff up. So you're, so you're a little younger than me. So like, what was this? So you're probably in the early late thirties. So what would that have been? I'm 39. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what was like the thing when you were a teenager. I, I definitely was a saver. Um, saver. Ever, okay. I mean, we're talking, I was a saver from when I was like five years old though. Oh, wow. I had a godmother who, um, she was in the highway patrol and every time I'd see her, she would, you know, whatever, whatever change she'd have in her, in her pocket, you know, it'd go straight to me and my little green wallet that I had. <laughs> nice. And then I would just, I would count the money over and over and over again. Oh, um, you counted your money too. That's one of my mom's favorite stories. You used to count money? Oh yeah. Uh, she'll tell you this story. I, uh, again, I digress. This is about you, but this is a therapy <laughs> session. I had this little black bank, mm-hmm. like it was this, it was steel. It was like heavy. Yeah. And I would put, you know, it was quarters, nickels, dimes, and pennies. And I would put it in and it would never count the nickels right for some reason. And I would be so irate that it, it's off by a nickel. And she's like, yeah, don't worry about it. I'm like, no, empty it out. Start again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had an automatic counter. It sounded like I was putting pennies in stacks of 10. <laughs> 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 there you go. There you go. So you weren't, so you were working at what you weren't working to buy the next thing. Oh, never. Okay. Oh, things are not, things have never, ever been important to me. Even, I mean, Jason, Jason will tell you now, things are still not important to me. Nice. You can get rid of everything. Nice. So is it experiences? Is it comfort? Is it, what, what is it for Jen? Um, it's time with loved ones. Oh, so it's experiences. I want, I want to experience things, but more importantly, I want the people that I love to have those experiences. Nice. It's the memories. It's, it's, yeah. it's all of that. Okay. Absolutely. So I want to go back to dad. Cause again, one of the things I'm trying to teach in, in, and when I'm trying to help grow and make the middle class stronger, it starts with understanding what's coming in and what's going out. So mm-hmm. that exercise of sitting down next to dad is step one. Yeah. And then step two is, is what do you do with that opportunity cost? Because whatever's left, we'll say 300 or 500 or whatever number you want. Do you remember how your mom and dad sort of treated what was left? Did they save? Did they just spoil you, your brother and sister? What they, happened? They really didn't have enough to save. Okay. Um, they, their thing, their getaway, yeah. where my parents would go is on payday, they would go to Wendy's and they wouldn't have lunch together. Oh, it was, it was very simple. Like yeah. there just wasn't, there just wasn't much. All right. So um, now, but, yeah, go ahead. But I will say um, it was sort of a lifestyle that we lived because their dream was really to build a house mm-hmm. and, and they did it. Um, yeah. So they were, we all, we lived in Fresno. I mean, right. The funny thing is, um, my family, we're a huge family, but we all live right by each other. Jason says, I can't believe all of you guys live in five mile radius. He was like blown away when we first met. Um, so my parents, they would drive by the same streets all the time and they found this property. So it was an acre property. And they said, my dad said, I'm going to find out who owns that property, went to the city, found out who owned it, Mr. and Mrs. Summers. And then um, they bought that for 40,000. It was an acre. And so I saw that process. I would go with dad every month to make the $267 payment to Mr. and Mrs. Summers. We'd sit there on the kitchen table, have an hour. But I saw that and I knew that he was paying them interest. It was 10% interest. Um, So even though it was $40,000, it was still going to cost more than $40,000. Yeah. Um, How old were you when that happened? I was 12. I was probably about, let's see, we moved into the house when I was in fifth grade. So I don't know how old you are. Around then? Yeah, 12 sounds. Yeah. Sure, 12? why not? 11, 12? 12? Yeah, okay. All right, so uh, just so I'm clear, 11 or 12 is when you got the acre or 11, yeah. 12 is when you moved into the house? Probably about 10 was when we when they purchased the acre. Okay. And then from that point, um, 
we had, I mean, they had to save money. So here we go, save money again. So we moved in with my grandparents. Oh, okay. And we moved into their garage. So we were a family of five, and my mom decorated the whole place out. There was two beds in there. We had a couch. There was a living room. Well, not a living room, a space that was a living room. Yeah. And then you had the bathroom with a shower, and that's where we lived for, I want to say, maybe a year and a half or a couple of years. Yeah, uh, and again, that's, that's, that's how you do it. I mean, sometimes when you have a big goal like that, like building a house, you have to step back, get uncomfortable, yeah. which I'm sure it was. Yeah, absolutely. So you can move forward. In today's social media age, that's hard to do. Oh yeah, I and I wasn't. I was never embarrassed by it. Yeah. Um, it was. It was like it was something exciting. It was kind of an adventure that we were doing, and so then eventually we moved out of the garage, and then we were able to um, rent the house next door to my grandparents. Okay. <laughs> like I said, we all live really close. Yeah. To each other. That's pretty close. Although yeah. it's not the garage, it's pretty it's close. Not the garage. It was next door. Um, so we lived there while the house was being built. Nice. And um, it it took about four months for it to build. Okay. To be built. And the contractor underbid the job, and so they did a pretty. It was about a twenty-two hundred square foot house, and I think back then they probably paid about like one hundred and seven, hundred eleven, something like that. Yeah. Nice. Do they still own it today? We still live there. We was there last night. We were there last night. Yeah, it's gonna. It's their forever home, right? It was their goal and. It is their forever home, but in order to build that home, there were some things that had to get cut. So like, <laughs> there's still no backyard. <laughs> my mom still gives my dad crap about how she wanted a bigger kitchen. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. fun. There you go. There you go. So I'm curious. So so you you um, you go through life. You meet Jason. How long did you and Jason sort of date? You know what, what was. Well, that- um, that's a good one. So Jason and I met in November okay. of 2006. Oh, okay. All right. We were living together in February. Oh, hello. Okay. <laughs> hello. <It was> a <laughs> little rough. And then it was, um, I, I mean, it was intense. It was intense and we were yeah. just, it was, it was fun. It was intense, but it was hard. Yeah. Uh, I would say the next six years were probably really, really hard for us. Not like two years. Yeah. Give it six. six years. Now, how much of that was hard because of money? Oh, like probably 90% of it. Right. And that's what I want people to hear here, right? You came to this with a very special background. I know mm-hmm. Jason, and if he doesn't like what I have to say, he can hit me next time, but I believe this to be true. He was always of the mindset, I'll just go make more, right? I'm not going to worry about what I'm spending. I'll just go make more, right? He came from a commission background like I did yeah. And, yeah. and was successful, right? Oh. I'm on, I'm going to go get this. Yeah, I'll sign up for that cuz I'll just get another commission check and I'll just I'll just I'll yeah, I'll pay it off with it. the next check. Yes. Right? That that's a that's a money clash. Right? Just where, oh, where yeah. you came from. I mean, at that point I had my spreadsheet. I had my Excel spreadsheet with all the bills that I had, um things that needed to be paid off, and I asked Jason like where's your spreadsheet? Your spreadsheet? <laughs> no, there there just wasn't one. <laughs> what what spread i have lots of spreadsheets but not that one <laughs> it literally drove me crazy for for years um and but then again like we i, I never wanted him to provide for me right of course so i went into this into this relationship and i told him okay here you have this house you know i'm moving in i don't expect you to pay the whole mortgage i'll i paid half the mortgage wow. and I, that was really stupid. I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would have been more like 70, 30 or something, yeah, he right? Was, he was under on that house and I could have bought my own house at that point. <laughs> um, so what we ended up doing is um, we, we needed another house. The house was at that point, it was, it was, he was underwater on the house. Mm-hmm. And so we ended up buying a house under my name okay. and he short sailed his house. Got it. And that was really, really hard for him to do. Um, because for Jason, he is, even though he didn't have like this, this budget, right. He was very prideful and wanted to make sure that all the bills were always paid on time. Sure. Um, so like to short sale a house. I mean, it took a long time for him to be ready to do that. Yeah. Well, it, it, it yeah, that was a hard time for lots of people. Jason by, mm-hmm. by no means is the only one there's, it was tens of hundreds of thousands of people I had to go through that. So, oh yeah. But yeah. I was like, why, why are you sticking with this house? It, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Let it go strategic default move on just cut cut your losses and move on absolutely yeah it was yeah. it was the right thing to do so i 
what I want people to hear, and again, I want to show the spreadsheet. Let me just share something again. You talked about having your spreadsheet. And again, one yeah. of the things I'm trying to provide people is a shortcut because not everybody thinks spreadsheets, right? So can you see this? Hopefully it's come up. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. Yeah, so what I've done for folks, and again, we went through this all last time, but this is what I wanted to, to get to getting folks. Put in what your, your bills are. And I've given you samples here and there's all kinds of expense types and stuff, but you know whatever it is, and then track it, right? Here's what they're supposed to be. Or if it's like, where do I have food? Like food, okay, I think I'm gonna do 500. Well, some months you do more and it turns red and some months you do le you know, on target, and some months you do less. This is just how you do it. This is how you figure out what you're spending and what you're good at and where, really where the leaks are in your financial boat. Because you may think you have this and that without a spreadsheet, without monthly tracking, who knows what's going on? Oh yeah, you need you, you absolutely need to have an awareness. Yeah. And really what I'm asking people to do in the course is meet as a couple. And this really came from your video or interview with you and Jason. Uh, I believe you guys meet on the weekends or at least once a week, I think you said. Um, this Friday night, last Friday. Yeah. So I'm telling people to try to meet at least once a week. And if you can't do it once a month, get your statements, make a... Make a thing, right? Have lunch, do something, but do this so you can understand where you are together. And just doing this a couple of months, it'll be amazed the kind of conversations you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, cool. And it's hard initially. I will say it, it, re it is really hard initially because like I said last time for me, it was, you know, when he saw that I spent, you know, $200 at, I don't know, home goods, you know, he doesn't value home goods the way that I value home goods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So those conversations were not easy, but then eventually, you know, that, that judgment just isn't there. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not judging you because you spent X, Y, Z. Yeah. I just need, we need to know what we are spending. Yeah. That, and that's where this needs to go. So first and foremost, don't attack each other. Don't judge each yeah. other. Cause if that happens, then you just start hiding things. And that's the worst. And honestly, honestly, he wasn't even attacking me. Yeah. It was, it was just, um, I, it was just me. No, I yeah. Was so about it, you know yeah. what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You think, and, and I'm, I know Jason. He wouldn't. He would. He would never attack you. He's, he, yeah. <laughs> but you, you may think that, right? You may. Oh, I'm gonna hide this because, yeah. right? I'm gonna hide this in my trunk and take it out it's later. That's exactly that. Same thing when you go shopping and you don't bring out the <laughs> bags until he leaves. Yeah. Oops. There's one more bag in the trunk. I forgot it's there. Right. Yeah. Now um, I just have to go get bags. <laughs> hey, honey. <laughs> Here's the receipt. <laughs> Put it in the file. So again, folks, talk about it. Have conversations. Uh, it will. It will. It'll probably be hard, but I'll say it'll be uncomfortable. And it'll be mutually uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? But I promise you, you do it. I don't know. I want to say six or nine months. How long do you think it took before it was just easy? Longer? Uh, probably a year. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, still a year in the span of your relationship is nothing. It's a whisper. Right. Yeah. But let's let's. But that was because we both had we both came from different relationships too, and we had this baggage that we came to, and we had to figure out what was okay with in our new relationship, right? right. Yeah. Um, but I think it baggage. could be much about all that stuff. Yeah. But I promise you this: um, getting through that, even if it's a year, even if it's eighteen months, your relationship will be so much stronger. You will see things together, um, like very few couples. I mean. I, yeah. I'm trying to think of how many couples I know that truly talk about money. And I, it's less than 10, right? Because really? somebody's hiding something and somebody's hiding something and somebody doesn't tell somebody. I mean, I still have sales reps who get a commission or a bonus check and have a separate account that the money goes to. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, wow. It's not okay. Yeah, but I, I do think, I mean, going back to how I was raised with my dad, you know, we had money wasn't something that we avoided. Um, so we talked about it with my parents. When I was there sitting in my high school counselor's office, I would ask her, like, how much money do you make? Oh, nice. I, I wanted to know. Um, so what do these careers make? How much does this, this make? You know, um, yeah, it was, it's never been a thing. Even the kids that come into my office at my school, you know, I'll pull up um, salary schedules and show them this is what you'd make if you get this job. And, nice. you know, we're talking about it. See, that doesn't happen. I mean... People don't talk about income. They don't talk about taxes. They don't talk about spending. They don't talk about savings. They don't talk about investing. I mean, yeah. it's the Kardashians and social media and all this stuff, which doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. I have a 16 year old niece who I'm trying to feed into right now. I'm just pouring into her and 
explain to her, you know, that all that stuff, you don't, you don't need all of that. You know, those people have millions of dollars right now, right now you're getting, you know, $300 a week from your job. You know, how are we going to spend that money? How, yeah. what are you going to, yeah. um, um, the other thing I'm, I'm trying to teach and talk about is, you know, again, as an econ grad in MBA, we, we talk about opportunity costs a lot, right? Opportunity costs is, hey, if, if you go buy this, that money is committed, you can't go buy this. That's typically how it's talked about. But where I want to get people to talk about is opportunity cost of time. Uh-huh. Because again, going back to your dad's example, you had three or $500 left over. I thought about it like that. Oh, good. You know, Not- it's going to take him this long to get those pair of jeans. Yes. Talk about that more because almost nobody has that epiphany. No. Yeah. Um, I mean, everything from like when we go out to fast food, you know, my dad made probably at that time, I think he was making about $40,000 a year. Okay. Um, okay. When you break that down, it, it wasn't that much, you know, even for then, I mean, it was middle class, but it was probably on the lower middle class side. Yeah. Um, so I would always think about those shoes are going to, he's going to have to work like four hours to get those shoes. Right. So when I was that little, I thought about that because I knew exactly how much he made. I was able to break that down into how much he was, you know, making per week, how much he was making per hour. I was thinking about thinking that way, just like how That's you talk. Rare. Yeah, that is that is really rare. And and again, it's what people need to real again, kids, or even sometimes significant others. Like let's say you make, let's say for easy math, you make 120 grand a year just for easy math. That's 10 grand a month. You may yeah. think that that's what you have coming in. It's not even close, right? First of all, there's taxes. So there goes two grand. Then there's $6,000 in other bills that you have to pay just to survive. So in reality, you got like two grand left over. And it's that two grand that you need to decide to buy jeans, a new phone, a trip, a car. It's not the 10 grand, it's the two. Right. Right. And um, I think people need to have that. I really need to have the conversation with teenagers because again, when you talk about jeans or a phone or whatever, it's, do you know, mom and dad need to work thousand dollars these days? Yeah. You know, mom and yeah, it's just nuts. You got to work. Mom and dad got to work three months in seven days to afford that. Is it worth it? I promise you most kids would say no. Well, some would say yes. Well, some would (laughs) (laughs) let's hope, let's hope less than we, let's hope less than all of them. But yeah, that's, and that's a big part of this because we've really got to think in discretionary dollars, what's left over. Yeah, because if you're not talking, it's, it's only discretionary dollars. That's where savings comes from. That's where investing comes from. That's where emergency funds come from. It's the discretionary. It's not this magic top line number. That's yeah. the only number people talk about. What, that's the only thing, like, what do you make? Oh, I make this. But that's not what you keep. That's not what you have left. I mean, there, between here and there is a huge gap. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I'd say where I lost my sense of money probably was actually in college. Hmm. Uh, ironically. What happened? So when I was in college, you get, you know, you're getting loans and you're getting grants and you're, so I wasn't really working for that money mm. and I would just sign for it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I would say I was probably most naive about money during college. Interesting. Although the money that I got from my job when I was in college, I was very aware of that. Ah, so it's the, I, I, I almost called it free money, but it wasn't free money. You paid interest on that. It was free money while in school. Yeah. But once you got out that, uh, how much did you, how much debt did you leave school with? Uh, my undergrad, it wasn't much. Um, well, I finished undergrad in, with about 12,000. Okay. That I was responsible for. And mm-hmm. then my dad um, probably had about 20,000 that he was responsible for. Okay. And then in grad by the time I was done with grad school, I think total, I had like 22,000. That's not bad. Yeah. I think I left no. undergrad with 20 and I think I had 40 when I was done with my MBA. Yeah. Like and that. I didn't need it all. If I would have been more aware of money, I could have done without a lot of it. Yeah. That's interesting. That's funny. That I'm just trying to think that through, right? So you're nine, 10, 11, or 10, 11, 12, 13, getting a job, working it, doing your thing. You go off to school. Do you think it was because of your surroundings? You're around in other Teenagers, uh, 18, 19, yeah. is that it? I'm in UC Santa Barbara. Oh, so. well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, enough said. <laughs> Done. Done. Got it. Check. Understood. Yeah. Okay. It. Okay. All right. And then you get out of school. When did it hit you that you, I don't know, like, what was your first student loan payment? Do you remember? Like, oh my God, I owe what? Uh, I don't think I paid them for a while. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I, I think they were, it was like a hundred bucks or something. Oh, so, so it you're wasn't not, bad. You're, okay. paying, you're not paying any of the balance. You're just paying the interest and they want it. It was going to take me probably 50 something years to finish it. Yeah. Um, I think eventually Jason and I, it was actually when um, he transitioned to real estate and wasn't working anymore. And we just had to like really cut down on, on our bills. And we decided, okay, it makes more sense to pay those student loans off than to continue having a payment. Yep. Um, so, you know, and it cool. was done. Nice. Yeah. I basically took all my like first four or five commission checks and just paid it off. Cause I didn't, I didn't want it anymore. It ma- makes total sense. So l- let's talk about how we help others, whether it be someone in our age group, you know, 39 to 48, just since you said your age, I'll say mine, uh, whether it be your, your nieces and nephews, the teenagers, how can we help people be comfortable talking about money, spending, budgeting? How, how do we do that? Um, I think amongst your friends, I would start with your inner circle, right? Um, those that you're really close with, you know, have that conversation. You know, we talk about everything else. I mean, I would say we had friends over the other night and, you know, having conversations about money, it, it, we're, we're, we're an open book. Yeah. Okay. We've been together really long. Um, so I think that's important, you know, not being afraid to talk about it and being able to talk about it with others that yeah. you trust. And then it just becomes easier yeah. um, to talk about it with people that you don't trust. You're not, I would, I would say never be embarrassed of where you are in your current situation. Yes. Right. Um, I pulled up my social security um, statement. Yeah. And I have taken a look at that. I mean, there was years where it was like 2000, 3000, <laughs> you know, then you go 20,000. I mean, my first job, like a professional job, I was working probably making like 32,000 a year. Right. Yeah. And then to see over the 15 years, it goes up. I mean, yeah. When you're working in, when you're working the 95, you know, that's, that's good. Um, now I can see Jason closing deals and making what I make in a year and a couple of deals are one deal sometimes. <laughs> yeah. That's well, there's being an entrepreneur and, and, and a good one at yeah, that. Sure. Um, I Nobody guess. Nobody talks about that either. Sorry? Nobody talks about that either. So when you're in school. Yeah. You know, I'm a high school counselor. So yeah. the idea is always to tell these kids, go to college, go to college. And you know, the kids that are highlighted all the time are those 4.0 and above kids. Mm. You know, I'm always pointing to those ones that are like the 2.0 that think that they're, they're not sure what they're going to do. It's okay. You don't need to know. Yeah. That, that mouthpiece that you have on you, man, that's going to, that's going to be you in the future for sure. Do you know what my most valuable college course was? Communication. You got it. Uh, speech, but yeah, communication. Absolutely. Without, I mean, without question, if I would have just taken that one course, that one course took me from an introvert kind of like, I'll talk to you if you talk to me uh-huh. being, okay, uh-huh. I'm comfortable in front of a group. Right. That was, that was an amazing course. Yeah, the students that can talk and they're not afraid of talking to adults. And um, those, those are the ones that, you know, that they're going to be pretty successful. Yes. Without question. Yeah. That, yeah. So, you know, the other thing I want to really highlight is once you and Jason got together, you had that year of kind of battling it out and budgeting really what that set you up, that foundation, in my opinion, you can tell me I'm wrong, but I think it's that foundation of understanding where the dollars and cents were. That was the rocket fuel or the foundation for what is proven to be an explosive growth with real estate entrepreneurs. Without that foundation, you likely would have cracked and burned and it wouldn't have been as easy or comfortable, I think. You to learn how to talk to each other. Yeah. It's that, it's that communication and being open and... Um you know, just putting all your cards out on the table. Yeah. But again, it's even more than that. It's, it's because you had that foundation and you were comfortable talking about a budget and you were yeah. setting things and tracking it allowed you to make decisions about where, like Jason was going to advertise and he was going to peel money off to do this and do that. And obviously the returns have been wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, but you didn't know that when you were making those choices. No, sure. Didn't did not at all. Um, yeah. I would say a lot of the business, I've really just trusted him. And that includes the purchases that he makes. You know, I knew that he, by that point, you right. know, Jason wasn't going to make irresponsible decisions. Um, yeah. yeah. I'd let him know if he did. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, I want to close on a really high note. Something that I believe both of you are doing now is you are really, you're leading by example and enjoying life. Yeah. And for a while, I think you did, you went on trips every quarter. Did I hear it's now almost every month? Yeah. Um, he wanted to go every 90 days Yeah. and now it's every month. Um, so we actually leave to Viartha next, next Friday. 
and again, this is, is it a long weekend? Is it a week? What, what is it generally? It's a three day weekend. We're going, we're going to leave Friday. We come back Monday. So yeah. quick. Um, we're headed out there with a couple of friends of friends that were here this weekend that we're talking about money with. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be lots more conversations, business conversations at the pool. <laughs> there you go. Well, what I wanted to talk about there is again, it's not always about just stacking chips and stacking chips. It's again about the experiences and relationships and, and, and pouring into others like you're doing with your niece. Uh, it is giving back. So I just wanted to thank you for giving us some time. Any closing thoughts about money or anything you want to say before we wrap this up? Um, I would just say, you know, just be open, just be open, you know, talk about your finances, you know, don't fear the judgment, you know, from your spouse, your boyfriend, husband, whatever it may be, vice versa. Um, you know, you can, you can go a long way if you have that open communication about money. It's not something that we should, we should be scared of. Very, very cool. Well, this is fun. I will post this video just so you know, it'll go live at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Alrighty. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have a good night. Yep. Bye. You too. Bye.